What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome back to another episode of Ruin a Random in a series where I go onto an online game and try and beat the person who's random that I've come up against and, and stuff and things. Um, today should be the last Ruin a Random where I'm kind of looking here uh, to, my, to my TV. Um, hopefully tomorrow my new TV is arriving with my desk so I can put both TVs on the desk and, and have them kind of like so you know I can look at the same place. And but, uh, yeah, we're going to be playing a game with this team. Like I said to you guys uh, in the, the squad builder earlier on, I haven't had the best of luck with this team to be honest and, and I don't know why that is. We will talk about that briefly in the video. Uh, first of all though guys, if you want to purchase any Ultimate Team Coins, check out FIFAcointrader.com. Their link is in the description, a very fast and reliable service. Um, just looking at the last three results and the form, uh, you can see I've won two of the last five and lost three of those and I lost 4-3 and 4-1 and I won 8-4 so I still you know, conceded four goals. Um, so I've conceded four goals in three consecutive games with this team. Uh, the two results before that I do believe were 1-0 and 2-0. So I'm not scoring many and I am conceding a lot with this team. Um, which is shocking because I, I don't know if it's the day because what's funny is both myself, Bateson, Capgun Tom... Um, and a few other YouTubers um, that I was seeing on Twitter having issues today with FIFA where like nothing seems to be going right for them and that's true to me as well like every every game I play today has been a struggle even the games that I've won has been tough and I, and I wonder like I said in the in the squad builder um, if that's because people are becoming accustomed to the five at the back and are figuring out how to beat it or if uh, I'm just coming up against better players maybe the ELO system because I, I've won like and um, before today I, I on this account I've won a, around like 50 of the last um, 50 of the last sort of 55 to 60 games and that's that's huge which means my ranking within FIFA uh, within like the the there's there's like a league system that we can't see basically uh, my ranking within that would have gone so high that I would have been then matched up against other really really good people and um, that could have huge implications as to to why I got beat you know obviously um, if I come up against really good people and I'm I'm not very good at FIFA 13 I hands down admit that um, maybe that's you know when I come up against someone who is good maybe I get fucked because I'm not good like that's that's how that works so this guy's got a 4-3-3 team Jesus Navas Torres Pedro Ozil Ben Yat uh, Alonso Pepe P no Pepe and Poyo uh, is that Pereira the right back Contreras the left back and Valdez in goal the Libyan rebels that we're playing against a Spanish team um, but I've got something to talk about first of all today, guys, uh, which is something to do with FIFA foot and a guy called uh, Tristan Bowen. So um, if you guys play Ultimate Team, which you probably do, otherwise you most likely wouldn't be watching this video, um, there is the AT&T All-Star Cup, which is basically the, the new trophy in FIFA um, or FIFA Ultimate Team where you have to build an MLS team um, and basically play, play, play the cup with an MLS team. Um, now, EA have uh, um, added this thing to this, this team, right, whereby, uh, sorry, just trying to, go on Kaka, oh, that's a great tackle. Um, yeah, so basically, there, there's a short list of players that could be in the MLS All-Stars team, right, which is the where they play... I don't know who they play against necessarily. Look at that for a shot. Or, um, but the opportunity of one of these players on this list uh, is to get into the MLS All-Stars team. I hope I explained this right. And um, the way EA have worked uh, uh, something into that, right? Oh, look at that from Kaka. Um, is basically this. If you use the players that are on that list in the MLS Cup or in Ultimate Team at all, and um, they get the most points, they will be automatically put in the MLS All-Stars team. Um, this may sound a little bit tricky, but I'll leave, in fact, I won't leave a link anywhere. If you just go to, um, if you go to, go on Ramos, um, if you go to Ultimate Team, there'll be a link there and you can click on it and you can actually see exactly what I'm talking about because I'm not explaining it well and I understand that I'm not explaining it well and uh, it's it's quite annoying look at that look at that i wasn't even looking i did the rabona chip across the jesus navas pow golasso look at that obafemi martins rabona chip thank you very much um 
So there is a guy called Tristan Bowen. Uh, he is the lowest rated ultimate team player that has the option of the opportunity to get in this, right? And myself and Cal Freezy were talking and we decided we want him to be in it because he's the lowest rated in FIFA uh, in foot that's in, you know, eligible for this. Um, so there's probably like the least chance of him being automatically selected through like his league performances in real life. So we want to get him in the team. Now the way the scoring works is every goal he scores he gets one entry vote, right? And the person with the most entry votes gets automatically granted into this team. So that basically means you guys are going to need to go and play with him and score a shit ton of goals with Tristan Bowen. Now Tristan Bowen is a right midfielder from Chivas USA in the MLS. Uh, he is an American player and he is bronze rated 60 in Ultimate Team. I'm not sure of his rating in like offline game modes or um, head to head or whatever. Um, but uh, that is that is how it is. And so basically, myself and Callum decided, uh, we, we well, we didn't decide. I guess we, we're asking for your guys' help. Uh, we want you um, to, to get him in this team, basically. We want you guys to get Tristan into this team. So we need you to score a shitload of goals with him. Now, one thing that is going to be apparent instantly, and one of the first questions you guys are going to be like, oh, but what about this, is that he's probably going to get price fixed on Ultimate Team, right? Because uh, this guy's going to rage quit. So I'll go into another game. Um, it's, it's so funny how when I come onto this and do a ruin random with it, I'm actually, I'm not really concentrating and I'm absolutely destroying the guy. But so... He's going to get price fixed on all the team. He's super rare anyway. There was only like 15 on the PS3 market and like 8 on the on the Xbox market because he's bronze rated 60. He probably gets discarded a lot. Um, so every time you score a goal with this guy in the following game modes, ultimate team, seasons, both online and offline, uh, head-to-head, -head, the, um, the kickoff, um, pro clubs, or like the offline pro clubs, or um, career mode, the, the regular career mode, um, if you score a goal with him in any of these game modes, basically every single game mode, he gets one vote every time. So um, I would I would love for you, myself and Calfreezy, would love for you guys to go out there and build teams and, and start games and, and get Tristan as many goals as possible so that he gets in the MLS All-Stars team. Now, one thing that I want to get clarified, which I, I've sent an email to EA to ask them about, is... Um, whether or not using sliders is allowed. I don't know if they'll be able to dictate whether or not you've used sliders because if you can use sliders as well, there's no way we can fail this, you know? Um, there's no way that... Uh, because you, you can go on to sliders, you can go on head-to-head -head and you can score like 50 goals a game with him. That's going to be way, way more votes than anyone else is going to get. Like every, Obviously, there's, there's players on that list like Landon Donovan, Thierry Henry, uh, Robbie Keane is on there... Um, there's, what's his name, uh, Robert Earnshaw, the Welsh winger, um, who's obviously very fast. Uh, he's on there. So there's a lot of like players that people might use during FIFA naturally. Um, but I don't think Tristan Bowen gets used himself at all. Um, so it'd be awesome if you guys could go ahead and use him, basically. So um, the other thing I wanted to talk about again today was, uh, of course... Um, just uh, the, this five at the back nonsense, really. Like, uh, the, first of all, I want to I want to address something, and uh, I don't like doing this a lot uh, because I, I got into a, a habit of doing this a lot back in FIFA 12, where every single new video would be addressing issues of a previous video, um, and it just it wasn't it wasn't a good vibe on my channel, and, and uh, I didn't like it very much. And you guys, you know, the, like the the true supporters didn't really like it either. But there, there's so many people on the fence about the five two. Two, two, uh, 5221 that I, I do feel like I, I want to talk about it a little bit um, I, like I'm not done talking about it anyway um, so one of, one of the things that pops up a lot is that since I started using five at the back five at the back is ruining FIFA and, it, and it's you know completely ruined the game that's just nonsense I've, I've come up against the same amount of five at the back teams since I did that video compared to when I didn't do the video, you know, like I genuinely did. Uh, I, I, this isn't a five at the back team in play to win. I've, I think I've come up against one or two in 20 games. Um, I just, I don't come up against many of them at all. And that's because using five at the back isn't an easy task. You have to have the right players. 
you have to play the right style of football um, and I, I just don't think it's uh, I don't think it's as easy to, to play with five at the back as people might first assume you, you know you instantly think ah oh, five at the back you know so many defenders you've got to be a shit kid to, to lose that game but that's that's absolutely not true because five at the back it only has two midfielders um, which means if, if you come up against someone with uh, four midfielders or with um, three midfielders, three central midfielders like this guy I'm playing does have, uh, you can easily, easily dominate games. If you just pass through the midfield, you'll get so many opportunities to, to create chances uh, against five defenders just because you can control and dominate that middle section of the field. And, and that's very important in football and in FIFA. You know, if, if you play it right... Um, you can you can definitely have your way with five at the back, which is why I enjoy coming up against five at the back. And I've said that many times. I enjoy coming up against five at the back teams because I find it remarkably easy to beat them. Um, obviously, it's it's a bit shit if they go ultra defensive. Uh, that's really difficult to beat them then because they've just basically got you know like eight men behind the ball at all times, and uh, that's that's just a pain in the ass. But um, yeah, so five at the back, right? It, it's it's a thing. It's it's definitely a uh, Oh wow, I can't believe I didn't score that. Um, it's definitely something where there, there's so many people sat on the fence about it. Um, and you know, I get so many people just, so, you know, so many people agreeing with uh, five at the back. It's a formation in the game. You know, if, if people want to use it, let them use it. And uh, I'm I'm fully with that. I'm in that camp. Hey, if, if you want to use five at the back, if you want to use three at the back, you find what suits you. And um, we'll go from there. But, oh my God, that nearly went in. And we'll go from there. But if, if you like, you know, whatever. And then you've got a lot of people that are just like, no, you ruined life. Um, and uh, I just, I find those people kind of um, funny. Like they're, they're the sort of people that would, uh, wow, that was a terrible cross. Oh, look at that, Alex Song. Oh, go on then. Oh, he's offside. They're just, like, they're, there's certain people within this community of viewers and subscribers and game players that like, they, they would say to you like you're just a pace whore and then I would say to them like what's your team and they've also got like super pacey players up front and I'm, I'm just thinking like you, you're, you're such a hypocrite like you're telling me I'm a pace whore and I can only win with pace yet you've got a fully paced team like there, there's no point like giving yourself a team that's going to make you play worse you might as well if pace is what dictates this game you might as well play with fast players am I right like because what's the point of playing with slow players there's a difference between anyway like um, you, you can play with slow players if it's a position that doesn't require too much pace. Like, like I've, I've always said, in the 4-3-2-1 and in the 4-3-3, I don't personally believe that the striker needs to have good pace. I believe that they have to have good dribbling, good shooting and good heading, um, which is why certain slower players work in that position. In almost all formations, the wingers need pace. Like, I've got Pedro this time around, and, and he's not the fastest. Um, he's, he's got 84 pace, which for a winger is respectively slow uh, for a winger. You know, there's, there's people out there like Walcott with 96 pace or Navas with um, 92 pace or um, how has that not gone in? Uh, or, you know, you've got, um, oh, wow, that is a nice tackle. Um, go on, Silva. Boom. Oh, wow, he's missed it. Or, you know, you've got um, <clears throat> Lennon that's got 90. 94 pace has Lennon got 92 or 94 pace but there, there's so many um, people that you can have out there that have got fast fast pace um, oh that is a cracking tackle that why why would you hinder yourself so in in that sense like you kind of pace dictates this game it, it genuinely does there's there's very few low pace teams that you'll see anyone use and and if you do come up against a person with low pace you instantly think, yeah, fuck this, I'm, I'm going to smash this guy because I've got a really fast team. They got, you know, the, the, thing, the thing about Ultimate Team is it's very arcade-like. So even if you've got players like, for example, Jesus Navas, who's got 73 shooting, his shot is still deadly, um, which it shouldn't necessarily be. Like, if, if, like pe people claim that pace is the deciding factor, but it's not. Pace just allows players to get into the position to have the shots or, or have a cross. It's the other, look at that. That's what I'm saying about Navas. That is a stunning shot. Like he's got 72 or 73 shooting. He shouldn't be able to achieve that. The pace allowed him to get into the position, but it's actually the fact that the other stats of fast players are so overpowered that that's why they seem way, way better than they are. Because like Navas with that low shooting, 
you know, obviously the odd shot here or there is going to go in, but I score a lot of goals with Navas because I find him very, very good to play with. Who have I got here? Navas against Contrao. Um, yeah, I find Navas really good to play with. And, like, for example, Kyle Walker. I score a lot of long shots with Kyle Walker, not in necessary play to win, but just when I play for fun uh, and I have Kyle Walker in the team, I try long shots with him, he scores goals. And that's because Ultimate Team is, um, is arcade based you know the the pace of the game is increased the 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 ability of the players is increased even though it says what it says on the cards and um in general um oh hello ref what come on um in general like it's that you know the game is is a bit is a bit fucked really and and it's only pace that really um shows that off to to be anything oh go on in let's get a foot on that yeah, like, like I say, I've, I've dwindled way too much on, on the subject of pace and five at the back here. But the, the bottom line is, for, for those of you that, that want to claim that, hey, I, I've ruined FIFA for you, um, I, I think there's, there's many, many other things in FIFA that are far, far more fucked up than five at the back. You know, like corners, crosses, headers, long shots, cutbacks, near post, David Luiz, one, two chip through balls, ping pong passing, ultra defense, counter attack. All these things, at least in my opinion, are far worse than uh, a five at the back team. And even three, five, two, the three, five, two and the five, two, two, one are very similar. Sorry, the, the five, two, one, two and the three, five, two are very similar in the sense that you've got the two strikers, the one cam, and then you've got three center backs, which is the same in the, the five at the back. And you've got two fullbacks, whereas in, um, in um, oh, that's a good head. In the 3-5-2, you've got wingers. In the 5-2-2-1, two, two, you've got fullbacks. But the fullbacks, especially like Danny Alves and Jordi Alba, are so attacking that they act as much of a, uh, a winger or as much as a wide midfielder as in the 3-5-2. So the formations are very, very similar. Like, there's not too much difference. The only difference is... When you go to like, um, that was unlucky, you had a good shot there. When you go to like defensive or ultra defensive, that's when you notice the main difference. And I don't actually do that. Like I, I don't go to defensive when I play. Um, I like to stay on balanced or, uh, oh crap, should have done better with that. I like to stay on balanced or go attacking or ultra attacking if I'm losing the game. Um, the only time I'll go on defensive or ultra defensive is when I'm coming up against someone who is doing the same and it's super, super hard to break them down because if you like, I'll tell you something about how to beat the five at the back as well because I've given so people so many pro tips with five at the back, not that I consider myself a pro player or whatever, but if you, I, I said in a video, if you go counter attack and ultra defensive with five at the back, you will frustrate opponents because it's a frustrating tactic to play against. If you end up coming up against someone that does that, just do the exact same thing because what happens is when you go so defensive, uh, like when you're up against someone that's so defensive, it invites your team forward so much to the point where as long as soon as they win the ball back, they can break and they're going to have a good chance of scoring against you because they're going to have a lot of men upfield. They're going to have a lot of space because your team's so far out of position. And uh, they're in general just going to have a lot of really good opportunities to, to carve your defense open. And if if you come up against a team that have got like Wellington and MNEK as the strikers with maybe like Carlos Eduardo as the cam or something, you're in trouble because they're so fast and so technically gifted in FIFA Ultimate Team that you're going to have a hard time stopping them if they break on you. So the only way to, to counteract that is to do the same thing. You need your players to sit deep as well so that they don't get out of position. So you just play ultra defensive and counter attack and you've solved the problem of someone that plays against you in ultra defensive and counter attack. And is it going to be a boring game? Fuck yeah, it's going to be a boring game. It's going to be a lot of midfield and defensive play. It's going to be a lot of uh, long shots and, and like not really carving out too many opportunities. But from time to time, even in real life, that's what happens. You know, like it happens in in FIFA. It happens in real life. Uh, it, it's going to happen. You know, eventually, it's oh wow, I forgot he doesn't have four star skill moves. Fuck, I should have just finessed it. Um, you know, like I said, eventually it's it's gonna it's gonna happen. Like ultimately in FIFA. The, the better player tends to win most games. There's the odd occasion, and we have all experienced it, many of us multiple times, but on the odd occasion, you are the much better player and much more dominant in the game, and you still lose or draw the game because of some nonsense like hitting the post several thousand times or, you know, crap like that. I've gone Pedro. I've gone Pedro. Oh, wow, he's too slow. Um, but... Um, 
yeah, like ultimately the the better player will will come out victorious. You know, nine times out of ten, I, I'd say like the the better person will come out victorious. And and if you feel like you're you're the better person and you're not coming out on top, chances are you're not the the better player. Like chances are it's actually because you think you're better than you are, which is what I tend to do a lot of the time. I think I like. In FIFA 13, there's no doubt about it, I'm, I'm not great at the game, but I, I would still think of myself as very good. But then I come up against some solid players sometimes, and I actually get my ass whipped. But then I come up against some solid players and kick ass, and I, I just think, wow, this game is so f fucked at times, I, I just don't know what's going on, you know? But um, bottom line is, this, this whole 5 2, two one debate, or 5 at the back debate, is there is a tactic to counteract every tactic like the 352 can easily be beaten if you just get a 433 formation um and uh you you can dominate with the 433 against the 352 the 5221 can easily be beaten by a formation that has four midfielders so go ahead and pick yourself up a 442 or a 343 or 43 a 3421 or a 433 because three midfielders is enough and you will dominate the midfield to the point where you will make the person who's using the five at the back feel silly because you'll just destroy them. And I've done it many times. You've probably beaten people with five at the back many times and it's actually uh, a relatively easy thing to do. Um, I I'm still interested in your thoughts and feedback on, on what I've talked about this video and in general with five at the back. Um, I managed to pick up a nice 6-1 win there against that subscriber. Um, he was obviously a, a bit frustrated at the end, um, not really he, he, you know, he, he was trying to keep the ball in the corner because he was getting pissed off. Um, but uh, yeah, I clearly, clearly dominated that guy. Um, what you'll see as well on the screen, right? So one of the issues with um, losing games is people's tendency to not hold on to the ball a lot. And this guy here has a 66% pass accuracy. That's nothing to do with the amount of defenders I have in the team. That's to do with the fact that he has an inability to to find the open man and to find the man in space and, and when he gets pressed by players not necessarily defenders but players anywhere he loses the ball he, he or maybe he tries the the superman pass or you know maybe he tries not the superman pass but like you know the hail mary where he just tries the over the top chip through ball and it doesn't come off for him too often and uh, that that could be people's downfall a lot of the time and they'll see five at the black back and they'll instantly blame the, the five at the back for the, the defeat when realistically a lot of it is down to what they're doing wrong rather than what the, the formation that they're up against is doing right. Um, so, um, yeah, hopefully some interesting points there. Hopefully you guys can take some stuff out of that and, and go back and uh, kind of think about what I talked about and come back to me with your thoughts and opinions. Of course, you, you're going to be different to mine. Some of you, some of you are going to be the same. That, that's what's awesome about this channel. There's a lot of diversity in the comment sections. There's, there's a lot of uh, controversy along with the diversity. Um, and that makes for interesting videos, you know, for me, like, like I say, one thing, I want to go back and address this because this is what I wanted to talk about at the start before I even started talking about five at the back is when people suggest to me not to reply to haters, it's, it's not that I'm replying to haters, it's that I feel like I'm addressing um, issues within the, the whole community. And I don't mean the FIFA community, I mean you guys, like my community, the community of fans that watch me. When you guys have such split, split differences in the comment section, I, I like to pick up on some of the stuff there and, and talk about it because um, it, it's interesting to me. What you guys have to say is very interesting to me. So I want to be able to talk about that. And, and the reason why I talk mostly about the, the negative side of things is because I want to get across my point of view to those. When Whereas the people that agree with me, I tend not need to like satisfy that agreement. There, there's no need for me to pull up a comment where somebody says, you're so right. And kind of like, you know, um, kind of like big myself up, but I don't need to do that because th those people already agree with me. So the people that disagree with me, I, I want them to try and see my logic uh, as to why I do what I do. Um, and, and if I can explain that and you can see my logic, that's fantastic. If I explain that and you still disagree, that's what the comment section is for. Feel free to put your stuff in there. Of course, if you're like obtrusively rude for no reason, I will just block you, but if, if you've got like a valid point to make, I will happily discuss it with you. So that's not me necessarily looking for the hate and replying. It's me looking for the the, the, the controversial topics to talk about and discussing them. That's all it is. But this is the end of the video, guys. This has been a very long video. Um, a nice 6-1 win there. I'm happy that I didn't concede four goals for a change. Um, as always, thank you guys very much for, for watching. Also, I want to actually, before we go, if anyone's still here, fantastic. I want to show you something, right? Because this, um, 
this baffles me how people do this. There's something called a win bot on PC where you go into a game and you start with a 5 0 win. And after like 20 in-game seconds, it ends the game and you get a win. But not only do you get a win, you get a win in the final of the tournament. So for the sake of like a minute's work, you, you make like five or 6,000 coins, right? Which is huge. Um, I was looking at um, match earnings for the last week, just out of curiosity, because I wanted to see where I ranked, because I played a lot of matches and I thought I might be in the top 100 and I wasn't. Um, and uh, let's have a look at, um, oh wow, they've, oh that's friends, that's why. Top 100, look at that guy at the top right. 7.2 million coins on match earnings alone in the last seven days, right? Look at his record, 36,312 wins, 36,312 trophies, which means the win bot has been transferred to console, um, which is a good or bad thing, no matter whichever way you look at it. <clears throat> it means a lot more packs will get opened, it will reduce the price of players. It also means the market will get flooded with a lot more coins, um, and as many of you disagree with uh, coin sponsors and, and uh, buying coins, many of you agree with it. That's neither here nor there. We're not the, we're not here to discuss this. But this guy's made 7.2 million coins in match earnings and 115 million coins, which he's transferred off the account from prize money from the the um, the cup, which means he's made the best part of 125 million coins in a week. Do you know how much market resale value 125 million coins are worth? This guy is rich because he's figured out a bot. It, just, it baffles me. Every Almost everyone on this list now is going to be uh, in that. Like, you look at the guy that's second. 31,207 wins, 31,207 trophies. Baffles me. I, I just wanted to show you that because it just it blows my mind how intelligent some people are. Like, yeah, you're hacking a game and you're fucking up, but it's crazy clever. It is clever. Um, this is the end of the video, though, guys. So hopefully you have enjoyed this. Uh, if you have, be sure to leave a like, rating, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. Peace.